guys, it's Sia and Kea. Welcome back to our podcast, Easier Read Than Done. For those of you who don't know, this podcast is for our book club, where we strive to raise awareness about global issues and educate people about how to do their part in a fun and creative way with literature that explores these issues. The book that we have chosen for today is actually really relevant to the current situation. This book talks about global warming and how our planet will eventually become unlivable because of it. A lot of books are set in a dystopian era in the far future where the earth has drastically changed due to our actions. But A Friend of the Earth by T.C. Boyle is a dystopian fiction written in 2000 and set in the very near future of 2025. Because of its predictions on life uh, on Earth just five years from now, it really shocks you into reality and frankly, scares you into taking some action. Uh, Before diving into the review, here's a brief summary of the book so everyone can follow. The story is about Tyrone O'Shaughnessy, who was a former eco-terrorist, convict, and now a caretaker of dying breeds of animals that quote-unquote no one could love. The metaphor here really becomes clear that Tyrone is less of an environmentalist and more of an eco-terrorist. He is the product of an unhappy and abusive child uh, household with a lot of anger directed towards the world. He, founds, uh, he finds his outlet in the organization Earth First, which is devoted to saving the Earth before it's too late. The novel is set in two different time frames, the early 1990s and the years 2025 to 2026, in alternating chapters between the world that hasn't been saved and the years of hopeless crusades to do exactly that. So this is all we're going to say about the plot as we really don't want to give out spoilers. For a more uh, detailed rundown, we have linked a couple of websites in the description with a more comprehensive summary that you can check out if you want to. Yeah, we'll stop. I absolutely hate when people give spoilers. Once I was um, reading this Agatha Christie book called And Then There Were None. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. And my friend told me who the killer was. It was so annoying and I hated that so much and we're not friends anymore. I'm kidding. Okay, I'm digressing. Um, Kea, do you want to talk about what you like most in the book? Sure. I think that my favorite part was definitely the dual perspective. Uh, The way we see his life in the past and the present really drives home the need for environmental protection. His efforts in the past are definitely extreme, but show the need for environmental protection and the situation in the present show the consequences that inaction can have. Yeah, I really like the shifting perspective perspectives too. And the fact that Tyrone always stood his ground and stuck to what he believed in, even though so much time had passed, is truly inspiring. Ty and his wife spend a month living in the wilderness without clothes or supplies, just on living just off their wits. This stubbornness can also be seen in his daughter, who lived in an old growth redwood tree for more than three years in order to prevent it from being cut down. Actually, there's an interesting fact revolving about the last uh, part that you just said. So the idea of living in a redwood tree was based on the real life activist uh, protest of Julia Butterfly Hill, who spent over an year and a half in a redwood tree encampment. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's quite interesting. The book itself is quite jarring and grave with the brave and extreme attempts like this to save the planet. But it is also interspersed with satire and dark humor that garner a lot. This book, in my opinion, can truly be summarized in the quote, to be a friend of the earth, you have to be an enemy of the people. Tyrone's proclamation here underlines the essential struggle that all of the characters in the book go through. This book is definitely quite somber with Tyrone's failed efforts being depicted in the past, but luckily they do not very accurately depict the current situation. There is still hope to be found in Boyle's story, with an ending focused on reunion and a slight chance of redemption for humanity. There is still time to change our ways and then hopefully avoid the bleak future depicted in A Friend of the Earth. So, moving on to the main issue that the book talks of, climate change. That's happening as we speak and ruining our planet in the process, and it is definitely not a laughing matter. It is kind of scary, to be honest. But 
there's a tiny sliver of hope. There are a few things we could do to uh, prolong the effects of global warming. In order to help you be more conscious of your ways and be more eco-friendly, we have compiled a list of easy things you can incorporate into your lifestyle. Well, the first and most obvious thing to do is reduce the amount of carbon emissions you generate. This is actually pretty easy to do. And one of the most apparent ways to do this is to use either public transport or walk or cycle instead of commuting by using your own personal vehicle. However, this definitely may not be uh, possible for everyone. So ensuring that your vehicle is fuel efficient would be a right step in uh, would be a step in the right direction. Another another thing that you could do is use less electricity. Turning off appliances when they aren't being used and buying appliances with a higher efficiency would definitely help. Yeah. And now let me explain why using less electricity goes towards reducing your carbon emissions. Electricity is usually generated by burning fossil fuels and converting this heat energy produced in the reaction to electrical energy. Though the process is designed efficiently to ensure not that no fuel goes to waste, uh, massive amounts of carbon dioxide are still released into the atmosphere, which could be detrimental. Plus, using less electricity saves money. Another thing that we can do is reduce our food waste. We should consume what we buy and reduce the trash so that uh, whatever goes to landfills or is disposed of by incineration and other polluting methods is reduced. Another food-related method to reduce your carbon footprint is by reducing your meat intake. Obviously, you don't have to go vegan overnight and that's not possible for everyone, but even cutting out animal products for a day every week significantly helps. Reducing your overall waste is also a good way to reduce your carbon footprint. You can do this by reusing, upcycling, or even donating whatever you can. One thing that makes all the difference, according to me, is being more mindful of what you use, consume, and buy on a daily basis. For instance, being aware of the packaging on your purchases, you can try and buy more uh, packaging free materials, which would cut down on your waste. And if these packaging free materials aren't available, you can always take your own cloth bag or um, boxes or whatever to the grocery store or wherever you're going to buy something so that you don't generate extra waste. Another thing you can do is to be aware of your clothing choices and try to buy clothes made from sustainable material or secondhand clothing. Educating people and making people aware of these small steps helps spread the word and adds more people to the cause. So even starting a conversation would definitely help. Finally, using less water and not polluting water is also a great method. And you can learn more about this from our previous podcast. In the end, remember to be mindful of what you consume and how to spread the word. Uh, we've linked a couple of websites and articles that you can use to educate yourself further. And even a couple of petition links that you can sign to help that's it for today, I guess. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends. We'll be back with a brand new episode soon. Until then, stay safe.